In this video, we're going to look at symbols in Ruby. Now symbols, if I launch into IRB here and I'll show you one, this is an example of a symbol. And, and what you have is the colon character in front of some text. That designates a symbol. The way to think about a symbol is it's like a literal. And uh, what I mean by a literal is like a one. There's only one one in the system. Even if you have, you know, if I got C equals one, D equals one, and let's ask it if C and D are equal. It's true because they're both the same. There's only one one. Well, I chose a bad number, three. So if we say C equals three and D equal three. Now equals doesn't just mean equality between them. They actually are the same thing. There is a three object in the system. You can only have one three. Well, the same is true for symbols, except that the way to think about it is it's a, it's kind of like it's a literal you get to create and use. So I can do something like this. I can say v, which is just some var. Let's say call it var, make it easy. Var equals some symbol. Like that. So let's look at var. There you go. Some symbol. Now just as a sideline, I can't do this because that's nonsense. This is this this is like saying one equals var. It's the, it's the same thing. You can't do that. One already is set to something. So the same thing here is you have the symbol and it's really what is important about the symbol is that name. So you have a symbol and you can use it. So we can even go some or let's just say symbol and do two string. Now I can actually get that name and do things with it. And I can take a string and turn that back to a symbol. Oops. Need to do this. And now I get a symbol back out of it. What this allows you to do is some pretty powerful meta programming. And what that means is I can actually program within my program. I can create other programs because I can use these to create method names and uh, variable references, that type of thing, because it, it has only one meeting. And let me show you an example of, of why that only has one meeting. So if we go back up to what var was, it's it's some symbol. So if I say some symbol, now that's a string, spell it right here, and I say to sim, and you, I demonstrated that, so it looks the same, right? But is it the same? Well, let's ask it. Let's say, is it equal to var? Sure enough, it's true. So, the thing to keep in mind with symbol that it's it's a literal type of programming construct inside a Ruby. Now, where I've seen symbols used the most is in a web application development environment called Ruby on Rails. And there's a lot of passing of information from a web page back into your web application. And there's a lot of symbols that are used there because they have that single value. It is what the name says it is. So you can take that and turn it into a variable inside of your web application. So you can move back and forth fairly easily. And that's not something you can necessarily do with other types of constructs. You're going to have to kind of explore them a little bit. They're not used a whole lot in, in general Ruby programming, but when you do need them, they're going to be there for you. And like I said, the most I've seen them used are in Ruby on Rails applications. So that's a little bit about symbols.